All right, here with more on today's events, attorney for uh, former President Trump, John Loro, who's with us. John, great to have you. Let's let's get the. Good evening, I'm sure Sean. you've spoken to the. Thanks for being with us. I'm sure you've spoken to the president. Let's get his reaction beyond his public statements. Um, we've been hearing from from one legal scholar after another, and they think this is an incredibly weak case. Uh, I love Jonathan Turley's line: uh, "The free speech killing indictment." I wish I thought of it. Well, the president is strong and resolute. He has a fight in front of him, but this is the first time that, in the history of the United States, that the Justice Department has weaponized and politicized political speech. The president believes in his heart that he had not only responsibility, but the right, as any American, to contest issues in the 2020 election, to raise important facts that, that the public needed to know. And, and now that public policy, that advocacy is being prosecuted, and it's being prosecuted by his political opponent, who controls the Justice Department and is using the tools, the sacred tools of the criminal justice system, to censor a political opponent in the middle of an election period, where President Trump, by, by all polls, is leading, and at the same time, President Biden is facing an unbelievable, unprecedented scandal that goes directly to his ability to serve in office. We, we are on uncharted territory. We are in a constitutional abyss right now. But one thing about this indictment, we're going we're gonna to take it, look at it very, very carefully, but it addresses one major issue, and that's an attack on the First Amendment that should never be allowed in this country. John, well, the, the first words of the president on Truth Social had a line in there that, that really struck me. Why didn't they do this two years ago? Why did they wait so long? And he writes, because they wanted to put it right in the middle of my campaign. Um, and it, and he is calling this election interference. Why didn't, if they felt this was a case as serious as they seemed to present it to the American people, why two and a half years later? Why in the middle of a campaign? Sean, He's I know now you, the chief I, opponent of the president. I know you, Fred. Yeah. Yep. Yep, and I know you've read the indictment and you've read the J6 report. They're interchangeable. It's just the same. It's, it's just dressed up a little bit differently. The Department of Justice could have rubber stamped this, you know, a year ago if they wanted to. But, but it, was, it was done at a time when we're in the middle of a political campaign to censor one political candidate who's getting his message out. And now the reality is that instead of vying for votes and engaging in the kind of discussion that we need in this country, the Biden Justice Department wants President Trump to be in a courtroom and not campaigning. And I think we know why, when you look at, at, um, at Mr. Biden and, and the way that he, um, he behaves. I mean, there's no, no doubt that he'd rather see President Trump fighting this out in a courtroom than debating him on the issues that are really important to the American people. Do you, do you believe this is a form of election interference? Do you believe that they purposely delayed this? I can't speak to their motives, but I do know this, that we will litigate every issue, including all of the, the matters that were raised in that indictment that go to the 2020 election. One thing that's very interesting right now, President Trump will have subpoena power in connection with this case. So we will have the opportunity now, for the first time in many instances, to subpoena documents, to subpoena witnesses, to get to the truth as to what happened in 2020. And that's all that President Trump wanted from day one. He asked Mike Pence, pause the voting, send it back to the states so that they can recertify or, or, or they can do an audit. But everything the president did was with advice of counsel and getting to the truth. That should never be criminal. Assuming that the president did not believe this and, and being able to prove that, I would say that that is task impossible, and that is the position I believe this indictment has put prosecutors in. Uh, John Loro, Donald Trump's attorney on this case, thank you, sir, for being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.